We're back with another video that is very high yield after we explore psoriasis. Today we're going to talk about atopic dermatitis, aka eczema. And eczema is actually isn't just a rash, it's actually an intense itch that causes the rash. So let's dive in. By the end of this lecture, you'll understand eczema from the genetic level to the clinic and be able to create a basic management plan for a patient with eczema. We're going to first discuss the two head pathogenesis of eczema. We need two things to develop eczema, barrier dysfunction, as well as immune dysregulation. It doesn't happen with only one of these meant. We're going to identify the age-dependent distribution patterns because the presentation of eczema in infants is different from that in children or adults. We're going to recognize the key clinical features and associated conditions with, uh, with, with eczema, which is the atopic triad or atopic marsh. We're going to outline the stepped treatment approach from daily moisturizers to biologics. So let's first understand what atopic dermatitis is. It's a chronic, relapsing, intensely pruritic inflammatory skin disease. And we have something called atopic marsh. And when you think of atopic dermatitis, it's the first domino in this atopic marsh. And most of the patients who develop this atopic marsh are children. So think of a child who developed atopic dermatitis. Shortly after, they may develop food allergy. And then after that, we have allergic rhinitis, and some patients may end up with asthma. So it affects 10 to 30% of kids in developed countries, and 85% of the patients are below the age of 5. So let's talk about the two head theory. We have two things to be met for you to develop eczema. The first thing is skin barrier dysfunction. And what happens here technically is that we have filaggrin gene mutation found in 50% of the cases. If you have filaggrin gene mutation, you will have decrease in ceramides. What are ceramides? These are lipids that are found in high concentrations in your skin. And once you lose them, you will also lose water, and this is going to lead to dry skin. So if you have a dry skin and now it's leaky, the allergens are going to be easily able to penetrate through and enter your skin. And that takes us to the next step, the immune dysregulation. We have type 2 inflammation here and dominated by interleukin-4, interleukin-13, and interleukin-31. Interleukin-31 is the actual problem here because it's, it's the itch cytokine. So whenever a patient develops this case, and then they have a very leaky and uh, skin, they have a lot of interleukin 31, and eventually they itch a lot, and that's going to lead to the formation of rash. Let's discuss the clinical presentation in different age groups, starting with infants. And when we're talking about infants, we're talking about patients between the ages of 0 to 2 years of age. In, in babies, eczema typically loves the cheeks as well as the outer portion of the legs and arms. Typically, the extensive surfaces, here we're talking about the elbows and the knees. A key pearl that is important to keep in mind is the diaper area is typically spurred. And the reason is it's moist. And because it's moist, we don't see the rash. If we see it, however, we're going to think of another high-yield condition, called seborrheic dermatitis, which we're going to discuss in another video. If we look at the lesion's morphology, we'll see that it's often acute, presents as red, weeping with crusted plaques. As the child becomes a toddler and starts crawling and walking, the rash makes its classical move and moves to the flexures. We see the rash on flexural surfaces like the antecubital fossa and the popliteal fossa, Sometimes we can also find the rash in the neck, the wrists, and the ankles. So a key pearl to keep in mind in children presenting with eczema is the flexural pattern. The clinical course and morphology of this um, rash is dry and it's lichenified. The reason is it's lichenified is that patients now grow up a bit more 
and they can scratch it. And because of this constant, constant scratching, it becomes lichenified, which is a fancy term in dermatology to say thickened. In teenagers and adults, the flexural pattern often continues. But we also see a lot of localized eczema. It's, it's going to be localized to hands, eyelids, or the neck. And especially hand eczema is very common, and it can be occupational in a lot of cases. So again, when we talk about the lesion's morphology, it is chronic, lichenified, and that's because of constant itching, and it's more prone to fissures and cracks, and this could be very disabling for the patient. So what are the hallmarks of atopic dermatitis? Because not every rash associated with itching is eczema. So as we discussed in the previous slides, one of the most important thing is age-dependent distribution. The second hallmark we're going to look at is intense pruritus plus xerosis. The reason of xerosis is loss of ceramides and therefore loss of water. Therefore, the skin becomes dry. In patients who are typically with children, we see the atopic marsh, atopic dermatitis, and then we see allergic rhinitis and asthma. We have other associated conditions like ichthyosis, keratoxis pilaris, as well as Denny Morgan lines. These are extra folds found under the eyes. Management of eczema is a stepwise process. You don't start at the top. Every single patient, no matter what, starts on step one. Daily moisturizers. These should be ceramide rich, plus bathing and trigger avoidance should be taken into consideration. If the patient develops flares, we step up to step two, where we're going to use topical corticosteroids as the first line and topical calcineurin inhibitors for the face and sensitive areas. We step up to step three, if this disease is very severe, we go with systemic drugs like diplomat, which is an anti interleukin 4 and theridine, and these are the main interleukins that play a role in the pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis. If this does not work, we can also go with cyclosporin and methotrexate. One of the most challenging things in dermatology is differential diagnosis, because one disease can be mimicked by many other diseases. For instance, an itchy rash does not always mean atopic dermatitis. It could be seborrheic dermatitis. Typically, patients with seborrheic dermatitis present with a cradle cap when we're talking about children, just as shown in the picture here, and it also affects the darker area, which is typically spared in atopic dermatitis. We're going to think about scabies as well. It also presents with intense itching. However, we see burrows and web space involvement between the fingers. Allergic contact dermatitis. These are going to be weird shapes matching the exposure. Once we saw a patient who was wearing a shirt with a dinosaur on it, and they presented with atopic dermatitis, and the lesion was very similar to what was on their t-shirt. Psoriasis. It's a well-demarcated, thick, silvery scale on extensor distribution. And here you want to keep, keep in mind, thickness presents as lichenification in atopic dermatitis. However, in psoriasis, it presents as plaques that are silvery. That's it for our lecture for today about atopic dermatitis, and these are the main takeaways that you want to keep in mind. Atopic dermatitis is the itch that rashes. It starts as itching, and therefore you develop a rash. An important thing to keep in mind is that we have the two-hit theory. One is barrier defect, and two is immune dysregulation. Distribution is age-dependent, and this is one of the most important hallmarks for diagnosis of atopic dermatitis. Moisturizers are non-negotiable foundation therapy. We're going to treat flares with topical corticosteroids or topical calcineurin inhibitors for sensitive areas and face. If the disease is severe and it's not responding to these, we're going to go with dupliumab and systemic treatments.
That's it for Atopic Dermatitis today. If you found this helpful, the best way to support us is to subscribe and see you in the next video where we're going to talk about acne vulgaris.